actually Michiko. Michiko. Michiko is here, and so am I, to just check in with you really quickly. And, oops, and, and, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Actually, if you guys can just give me a quick comment. I think I just messed up where I'm supposed to see the comments. What? Give me a quick comment because I don't think I can see your comments. Just give me a quick comment. Let me Michiko for you while I'm waiting for your comment. I think I messed up. I swiped and now there it is. Okay. Hey, Bronson. Hey, guys. I just wanted to check in with you really quickly because I'm, I'm heading out in a bit. Thank you, Bronson. And this is, <laughs> that is quick. Now you've made it really long. Hey, Catherine. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. How y'all doing? Hello, Roy from Spain. Hi, everyone. Just a quick civics lesson. Very quickly, I just spent several hours creating a, um, a guide for everybody because we have work to do and I've been talking a lot about work we need to do and what we need to do and a lot of people are really energized right now, especially politically. They want to be involved. They want their voices heard. They want to speak for animals and they want to know the most effective way to do it. So I just want to let you know to uh, encourage you, urge you insist you go to ColleenPetrickAdore.com or JoyfulVegan.com if it's easier for you to remember and check out the blog post called National Rifle Association for, not for animal rights, of animal rights. There's a, there's a difference. And the idea is that we could really take some cues from other organizations, particularly uh, on the right, in terms of organizing, grassroots organizing, being a political voice, for the things we care about. Thanks, Jeannie. I'm just taking cues from other people I admire and who've been doing this for a long time. So, you know, I, I, I've known Wayne Paselli for years and I saw him speak years ago, years and years ago. And one of the things that resonated with me was something he said that he's said before, and he's talking about the Humane Society, which is why they started the political action arm that they did, which is that, you know, one of the things you have to admire in some of the conservative organizations or organization like the National Rifle Association is they know how to get people organized. They know how to get people showing up to speak and legislate on behalf of the issue they care about, which is gun rights. Uh, we all care about animals and animal rights, and I think we could do a lot better as a coalition, as, an, as a, as a um, movement, and certainly as individuals and American citizens, and I'm not trying to diss any of my non-American listeners or viewers right now, uh, of course, get involved where you are as well. And the real, the real trick, especially in, in, in countries that are made up of laws like the United States, we need to be engaged on a legislative level. And so I created this guide to tell you exactly what to do first to just get you excited because we really do need to be involved uh, and to tell you that this are, there are real victories that happen on the legislative level and you know it's really hard to overturn laws and that's really where you see the changes happen along with social change and cultural change and the change changing our minds and I work on that level as well but changing laws for animals has to be part of the equation and I think we can all be better involved so go to ColleenPatrickAdroy.com go to the blog post that I just put out today I spent several hours putting this together so make it worth my time please and share it with everybody you know and go find your legislators go take the steps that I recommend we're starting a local political action community here in the East Bay in Oakland um, to again, you know, we need to get the people in uh, in the in the legislature, both federally, statewide, locally, to pass the laws that we want passed for animals. It's just really that simple, and there are many movements who've been doing this really well for a long time. It's kind of the whole idea behind the indivis indivisible folks. So I don't know if you've seen the indivisible. Um, uh, guide, but basically the Indivisible Guide was written by former congressional staffers who saw the rise of the Tea Party in the United States as a, as, as a reaction to Obama. And so they're saying, listen, Democrats, progressives, liberals, whatever you want to call yourself, need to do the same thing and here's how to do it. And they basically give you this step-by-step -step guide. I create a link to them also in 
my blog posts. The idea is that we need to get savvy, we need to get smart, we need to be strategic, and we need to understand the power of law laws in our country. We are a country of laws. Um, we do. And, you know, the things that you need to do, that we all need to do, have to happen all the time, every day. And they don't take that long. You, we all need to be a face for animals, a voice for animals. Tim, a good friend of mine, who I don't know if he's on here, maybe he'll watch later, but Tim's a good friend of mine. And Tim is an amazing friend of animals. And he's a fantastic advocate. And he's involved politically. And he's an inspiration of mine. And he's one of the people I'm forming this political action uh, committee with. Uh, in Oakland, he loves that when we go to public events, when we see the mayor, when we see city council members, they know our our faces as the faces for animals. So when they see us, and this is not an exaggeration, when the mayor sees us, who was a, who was a city council member, and we worked with her on different issues when she was a city council member, and we've worked with her on different issues since she's been mayor, um, and other city council members who we worked with on 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 stopping the backyard slaughter in Oakland, in, st in banning the bull hook uh, in Oakland, working with them, when they see us now, they go, hey, we've done, we've done some good work for animals, haven't we? They look at us and they go, oh, those are the animal people. Those are the animal people. And so the political action committee that we're starting is to say, yeah, and we've got power, we've got a voice, we've got money to donate to your campaign as long as you understand that what we care about is animals and we care about animal issues and we want to vote for you uh, as a compassionate person because we want to pass animal-friendly legislation and we think you're the person to do it. And just because you connect with one of your legislators, both, you know, again, either federally or statewide or locally, don't presume they know what you know. Don't presume they know the issues that you know really well. And don't presume that if they seem uh, opposed to them at first or confused about them, don't presume that they don't want to know more information. You might have more information than they have, and that's often the case, often. So this is about creating dialogue, as I always talk about. It's about creating connections. It's about being part of our communities. It's about being a voice. And there's so much we can do. There is absolutely so much we can do. I don't have time for cynicism. I don't have time for despair. I don't have time for people who say this isn't going to work, or our voices aren't heard, or it's only a corporate a system. If you believe that, then I don't know. That's really disconcerting to me because, uh, because every single voice matters. And one of the things I say in the blog post is don't underestimate the ambition of local representatives. The, these representatives who you can connect with and work with on a local level and actually get animal friendly legislation passed. I mean, so there's, there are real effects that can happen from these relationships. Don't underestimate that these are people who may want to go into the state Senate. They might want to go into governorship. They might want to become president one day. Hi, read Obama. <laughs> he was a community organizer and he became president of the United States. So don't underestimate the ambition of the people that you'll be working with locally because someday they might be in the state Senate. They might be in the U.S. Senate and you're going to need them and you're going to want to continue cultivating these relationships with them uh, so that we can pass animal friendly legislation legislation on, on all levels. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I'm watching Michiko. Does that sound good? Do we have a thumbs up? Do we have any thoughts? Do I, I want to hear anything and everything you have to say. And uh, again, just go to that piece and please share it because I think it's just a really helpful guide. It gives you some uh, places to link to, places to go to, some suggestions for what to do and just feel really empowered. Thanks, Michelle. Michelle is the only one to whom it makes sense. Thanks, Michelle. Yeah, so so there's a lot we can do, and uh, and I'm really excited to see what you're gonna what you're gonna do. Use that page, use that opportunity to ask questions, uh, use that opportunity to share things that you're doing in your community. Um, definitely take advantage of uh, political organizers in your city who may have already connected with some animal um, uh, friendly legislators and um, and uh, and take a cue from them organize. Even if it's two or three people who in your city are interested in speaking for animals, connect with that one person, connect with that two people. One of the things we need to take cues from, again, the indivisible folks have been doing this through, uh, you know, the inspiration from the Tea Party and how they did it. Um, that's okay. That's okay, Angela. I know some of you are probably busy. Um, that's okay. Sorry to chastise you. But the idea is that, um, 
that conservative groups, they organize better than progressive groups do. And there are a lot of reasons for that. I'm not going to get into that here, but uh, thank you, Alex. But we need to organize better. And we don't understand the power of this kind of organizing. We don't understand the power of just a few people having a voice. One person showing up at a city council meeting, one person writing to their state legislator, one person doing that represents several hundred. So don't underestimate that. And, you know, one of the things I love about the Indivisible Guide is that it says what is true, which is every... Every politician, every legislator, every single person who's an elected official, all they care about is getting reelected. Look at the, there's a wonderful article um, in the Washington Post today on how, you know, there was a recorded uh, recording of the closed sessions of the GOP uh, this weekend or yesterday. And they're, they're, you know, they're talking about how they have to tread carefully because this is all about the midterm elections. We need to understand that that's what politicians care about. They care about uh, getting elected. So Deanne, go to joyfulvegan.com or ColleenPatrickGoudreau.com and click on the blog post that's called National Rifle Association of Animal Rights and use that guide follow the suggestions it's a it's a really simple bit of information to help us feel more organized more connected more empowered and you might just have to watch Kimberly from the beginning but the idea is to be a voice to not underestimate our voice to be committed and it doesn't have to take that much time and if I have to say this every day for the rest of my life I will I will because we we need to understand the power of our voice in a democracy and if we just get lazy and complacent and cynical and full of despair nothing will change and then we'll say yeah see nothing was gonna change anyway and that's wrong-headed so I'm here to just give you some hope I'm here to put some power into your pocket and that's why I created this guide so I uh, I I hope you take a look at it I uh, I'm really um, I'm really hopeful about the work we're going to be doing here in Oakland. One of the things I suggest is, you know, we're going to be starting a political action com committee here in the East Bay in Oakland. And it's something, of course, people can contribute to because what it's going to do is basically get animal friendly legislators into uh, into our local legislator legislature. Uh, the idea is to educate them on animal issues. The idea is to pass animal friendly legislation, educate them on what the animal friendly legislation is oppose anti-animal legislation and that's what we're going to be doing so you can do that in your own city you can do that in your own city and if you can't do that then get involved with other cities desire to do this get involved on a national level the um, humane legislative uh, what is it called the humane legislative political something it's through the um, HSUS they're doing it on a federal level find out what the issues are and connect with your uh, with your federal state and local uh, legislators does that make sense you want to see Michiko? Are here and I have to go make sure she's okay. <laughs> this is the price you pay for being a mom who has uh, super supervision over her cats. And I bet I know where she is. I bet she's on her rock. For those who have seen these uh, live broadcasts before, oh, she's watching a squirrel. Know that she, uh, she has a rock. Michiko, where's your rock? Michiko, go to your rock. Come on, go get your rock. Go get your rock. No, go get your rock. Leave the squirrel. She's going to go get her rock and she's going to show you her rock if you want to see it. Get your rock. Leave whatever's there. Sorry for the noise. There's some cutting going on across the street. Where's that, Mitiko? Where's that, Mitiko? Where's your rock? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Whose rock is that? Fluffy <laughs> space. All right, everybody. Well, that's my news for the day. I'm not going to be able to do a live broadcast later, so take it to heart. Spread the word. Check out that blog post. You're not even listening to me anymore, are you? Because you're just watching each other. Easy's big deal. All of a sudden, Angela can comment. All of a sudden, Angela can comment, even though she's a pork. I'm going to tell. I know, Devin. She's just too cute. It's just ridiculous. Meet you, Co. Oh, so sorry, boys. Yeah, I speak utter nonsense when <laughs> around the cats. Thank you, Angela. Angela has already shared that blog post. National Rifle Association of Animal Rights. Not for animal rights. That would be awesome, though, if there's, like, an arm of the NRA that was, like, a pro-animal rights arm. Wouldn't that be amazing? National Rifle Association for Animals. Mm -hmm. That would be very interesting. 
Michiko, you have fans. You have fans, Michiko. Oops, sorry, I did not mean that. I for you to see my face. There's not catnip on the rock. She just loves it. I mean, certainly other animals could potentially mark this rock. Uh, I mean, I don't mean necessarily with urine, but with their own scent, with their own scent. Uh, and, or I think she also just loves the heat of the rock. She tends to gravitate to uh, warm, warm rocks, warm stone. Mitiko, I'm gonna show them your belly one more time. I'm gonna show them your belly one more time. Okay, show them your belly. Show them your belly. Oh, how dear it is. Mm. Oh, look at that. Oh my goodness, it's such bellies. Oh, she's such a bellies. All right, everybody, and I'm, I'm stalling saying goodbye just because I know some people really enjoy watching me to go. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, is he sleepy? She's very sleepy. She's very sleepy. Who's there? Who's there? Who's there, Michiko? All right. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate your, your, uh, your engagement, and uh, I appreciate your sharing the blog post and checking it out. And taking action, okay? For the animals. This is Colleen Patrick Adro. This is she, and there's a he right there. Charlie just showed up. Charlie just showed up. Come here, Charlie. Hello. Hello. I'm just gonna sit right there. What's up? What's up? Charlie's a boy, and me, she goes a girl. She's a princess, and he's a little prince. Hey, right, Charlie. Oh, that would make a really nice picture right now. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Charlie. Oh, I have to take, can I take a screenshot of that? I thought I could. Charlie. It's not what I wanted.